Oh my god, what the hell is this? Oh lord, okay, please kids, don't do that at home. I went really overboard with the contour. Hello everybody, salut tout le monde, Ghost Electra here, and welcome back to my channel. Hi, first of all, if you're new here, um, welcome to my channel. My name is Ghost Electra, I'm a French drag performer based in Berlin, Germany. And if you're already subscribed, thanks for joining me yet again. Hi, how are you? I know it's been a while. Um, I took a three month break. It was meant to be a three week break and then I just kept going. And here we are. First of all, I hope um, everybody is safe and sound during this pandemic. I know it's been really hard on everybody. So yeah, I hope you're being safe. I hope the lockdown is not too hard on you. Um, being in Berlin has been pretty comfortable. Um, we haven't really been uh, you know, confined to our apartments, so things have been all right here. Okay, so before we get started um, with introducing today's video, um, two things I do want to share. The first one is I know I have been away for a long time. Um, I think when the pandemic hit, I really saw it as an opportunity to take the time to sit down and be creative and finally launch my YouTube channel and produce content for Instagram. I was feeling guilty to have all of this time and not use it to produce content for Instagram and YouTube. And this pressure like really hit me hard. And so I had to take a step back. And here we are three months later. Now the second thing, um, this is probably my fifth time filming this video. The first two times I actually set up my studio in my living room. Right now we're in my kitchen. I just figured if I film in my in my living room, it's gonna be more cozy, you know, and I, I don't know. I just wanted to have like this really cozy vibe for this video. And then I filmed once, I had a lot of issues with my lighting. Then I filmed a second time, I had issues with my camera that was overheating many, many times. So I kind of um, gave up and then I waited until the next day. Then I um, watched the footage and I really wasn't happy with my background. So I figured we're gonna come back to the kitchen, my usual setting, and we're gonna try it again. We tried again, I filmed for approximately four hours. And then when I came to edit, I realized that the sound has had not been recorded by my microphone. So everything I had to scrap and here we are. Um, I had to grow my beard back and wait a little bit. So here we are. Okay, so um, I'm gonna stop blabbering about and tell you what we're doing. So today's video is not something super brand new. It's something that a lot of like beauty gurus and drag performers have done. Something that was inspired by Nikki tutorials. So we're gonna do the power of makeup. Now I know it's, you know, again, nothing new and I'm probably not gonna bring anything special to the table, but I figured we're gonna do a power of makeup video in which I do half and half. So half is gonna be boy, which is why I grew my beard back. And the other half is going to be drag. And as I get ready into my makeup, I'm gonna tell you a little bit more about what makeup means to me and you know how i got into makeup originally and then eventually into drag and yeah what makeup means to me as ghost electra but also as lenny um as a queer person as a gay man and you know it's much more than just makeup and i think you know if you watch the power of makeup videos on youtube a lot of people will tell you their stories and how makeup has really helped them accept themselves and I am no exception. So if you want to know about how I got into makeup and into drag and you wanna see me do my drag makeup, then just keep on watching. All right, and we're back and I look positively crazy. Um, as you can see, I shaved half of my face, including my brows and my beard, and the other side is as is for the boy look. So we're gonna get started with my makeup. As always, I've moisturized and primed using the Bobbi Brown Vitamin Enriched Face Base and the Milk Hydro Grip Primer. So as always, I'm gonna start with my brows. I usually draft the brow using the Krylon TV Paint Stick in 4W, then I set it with eyeshadow and I cleaned it up with concealer. All right, so I'm gonna start with my brows and I'm gonna start telling you the story of how I got into makeup. So I think it's pretty safe to say that I was never attracted to makeup. I hadn't come out to my family, so no one, well, I guess they knew deep down, but I had never officially come out. 
And it wasn't until I went to art school that I started living openly as a gay man um, in school. So I would um, go to school to pa in Paris and then I would travel um, every day from the suburbs. So I was living in the suburbs um, and I would travel to Paris. And so basically I would live as a straight man. So it was really weird to have this double life because like every day at school, I was just very open about it. And I came to learn to accept myself. Um, and then I would go back and just pretend, you know, I wasn't who I am. Oh, by the way, also, I was a virgin, so, um, and I remained a virgin until much later, and I'll, that, that'll come into play. So I wasn't really um, comfortable with my sexuality, and um, I had never, no intention of being part of, like, the gay scene whatsoever. I know it sounds silly, but again, back in the day, we didn't really have, I mean, we did have internet, but it wasn't like now. So, you know, my only knowledge of the gay scene was from shows like Queer as Folk, and it seemed like a lot to me. I was like, I'm not so sure, you know, I, this is my scene. So I never really um, was interested in like parties and the gay scene and being, you know, what back then I thought was being gay, which I thought was being promiscuous, you know? Um, so I was just waiting for Prince Charming and yeah, that was that. Um, and so it wasn't until um, the following year when I decided to move to Sydney, Australia, that um, I finally lived openly as a gay male. I still hadn't told my parents. So for the first time, I, you know, again, was living openly. And, you know, Sydney is a really queer friendly, gay friendly city. I think it was like back then one of the number one gay capitals of the world. Um, but again, I was just really uncomfortable with my own body, not only my sexuality, but also just my, my body in general. I thought I was really unattractive and mind you, I looked nothing like this. I had like long hair and I would wear very colorful shirts. Um, and I thought I was just really unattractive. And again, I was looking for Prince Charming. So I found no, oh, so I found no um, point in going to the clubs and again, meeting guys. So most of my friends were um, straight women. All of my roommates were straight women. So I would basically hang out with them and a bunch of straight people. I remember one time we did go to a gay bar and this older gentleman bought me a drink and it just made me so uncomfortable. First of all, cause he was like 55 and I was like not even 21 or I was like 19. Um, but just because again, I was just really uncomfortable with like flirting and you know, being queer. All right, so now I'm cleaning up my brow with a concealer. I'm using the Catrice Concealer Liquid Camouflage, but you can just use pretty much anything. So now to clean up the bottom part of my brow, I'm gonna use the P. Louise Base in uh, Rumor Zero, which is the white one. So then in 2011, I moved back from Sydney to Paris and I went back to school to study um, linguistics and that is when I finally lost my virginity and you know I came to terms with who I am. I started frequenting um, slowly I guess the queer scene and you know again feeling a little bit more comfortable in my own body. My look changed much. I guess I dressed up in what now could be called hipster, but back then hipster wasn't even a word. Like my style, I guess, would have been called preppy. That's what I used to call it. So I would wear a lot of button up shirts and, and bow ties. And I had like a, like some kind of like undercut and I was wearing fake glasses, cute eye roll. But anyway, again, uh, feeling much more comfortable in my style, in my body, in my sexuality. By the way, for my eyes today, I'm going to be using the Pat McGrath Mothership Palette. Now, I have no idea which one this is out of all of them. I've had this for a very long time, and I'm not even going to show it on camera because it looks gross as hell. Um, but it's... Uh... I'm gonna try and find out and I'll let you know down below, but it is a Pat McGrath palette. So in 2011, I met someone, a guy I was really into. So he actually was the one who took me to a party um, and it was like a queer party. So like so far, I think I had been to like gay parties with like, you know, a bunch of like gym queens and mask for mask guys. So I, I didn't even know there was such a thing as the queer scene. And I remember being like really flabbergasted because it was 
like so many people in looks like everybody looked amazing people were wearing like makeup and glitter and they were dressed up and I was just like, wow, oh my God, what is this? It was just so much fun. Like people being very queer, being different, being themselves. Um, and it was just like really, what's the word? Empowering, you know? When you look at the gay scene, and when I say gay, I mean like, you know, cisgender, homosexual, gym queens, no offense, you know, to each their own, but it's very much about like the way you look and, and it's very, normative like heteronormative like muscles and tank tops and so when i went to that party i was like wow like those people are just like really femme they're really quirky they're really creative they're really fun and so we actually started going to a bunch of those parties and that's when um i started frequenting this queer scene more and more and um alternatively uh, i can't even speak alternatively my own look changed drastically like gradually I started like bleaching my hair white and then dyeing them blue and then I, I bleached my eyebrows and dyed them purple and like I at some point I even bleached my beard and I would dress up in like crazy colorful 80s outfits and I was just like having fun with my looks so not only did I start dressing up at those parties but I also started dressing up in my personal life now I didn't really get into makeup just then I guess I was just mostly using like glitter and and I had literally no idea how to use makeup. I had never used makeup in my entire life. But, you know, we were using glitter and like gluing a bunch of shit on our face. So then in 2012, I actually moved to San Francisco for school. I was admitted in um, a exchange student program. And as you know, San Francisco is very queer. It's very gay. Um, I guess back in the day, it was even much more than it is now. When I arrived, I remember logging into Grindr. Now, I wasn't looking for a hookup, but I was just hoping that could be a good way for me new people and mind you again Instagram wasn't even a thing I guess it was a thing but it wasn't to me it wasn't really a way to connect with people so I logged into Grindr and I met this guy who was really cute and he offered to take me out for my first night out in town so he took me out and this was actually my very first encounter with the art of drag he took me to what back then was San Francisco's oldest still open gay bar which was called gangway and it has since closed because um gentrification and i remember like i mean of course i had heard of drag queens but i, ha I don't think I've, i had ever seen one in real life or ever met one i remember she was hosting a bingo so we played bingo and that was fun but then she performed and i was like why is she like lip syncing to this song why is she not singing it live i just thought it was really weird I didn't understand. I just thought it was kind of weird that she was lip syncing and not sing. But other than that, like she looked gorgeous and I was like really loving it. But again, it wasn't like an aha moment where I was like, oh my God, this is what I want to do for a living. No, not at all. I wanted to be a translator. I really couldn't care less about drag, but I did think it was a fun art. And you know, again, also it was like the, the next step into queerness because I was like, wow, this man is dressing up as a woman. Like that's even more empowering. So then this guy introduced me to a bunch of his friends and we became really close and really quick I actually, you know, met so many people who were queer in many different ways, some trans women, some lesbian women, some very femme males that really taught me what it means to, you know, accept being queer and be confident in who you are. Like you don't have to be this example of masculinity that everyone wants you to be you know and so i started like hanging out in this queer scene and going more and more and back in the day again instagram wasn't what it is today but we had tumblr and on tumblr i had like almost 10,000 followers which back then was quite a lot i guess so people would recognize me on social media or on the streets and again as i said i kept experimenting with my looks so i was like dressing up uh crazy colors crazy hair so this one day i am at a party and this 
girl who now you might know as a world famous photographer Parker Day she approached me she was back then she was a party photographer and she was like hey I'm starting my own party I follow you on tumblr I really love your looks and I would love it if you could help me promote this party and come in a look and bring your friends that are all dressed up and yeah you know be a host what we consider now being a host and so I agreed oh by the way I'm using um the Meron cream blend stick and light four now if this is hella light or way more orange than my actual skin tone i guess that's normal you know when you do drag you apply foundation all over your face so it doesn't really matter what your like actual skin tone is in the sense that you're not going for a natural makeup look like you would if you go out with your friends um so usually when i cover my entire face my actual skin doesn't show and so it doesn't matter if the foundation is a little bit too yellow or a little bit too pink or a little bit too light so this will definitely be way too light and it's going to be even lighter when i brighten it up with concealer um but you know this is drag so forget about that anyway so i started working uh with parker on that party and actually i started working as a host this is when i first started working as a host for a bunch of events um throughout san francisco so that's when i started like wearing makeup at first i was wearing makeup at parties now i wasn't wearing that much makeup because i knew nothing uh, about makeup so i remember I would just do this like white base that I was really attracted to and you know I've always been into really dark characters and villains this is, well, that's why I'm obsessed with Batman um, but like I remember I even went to Sephora and I bought powder like white powder because I had no idea that you're supposed to wear cream or liquid foundation and that powder is meant to set it so I remember I was just like applying powder onto my face directly Oh my god, don't judge. And eventually, I actually, um, like my nightlife life would actually spill onto my actual life. So I started wearing makeup and like experimenting with looks in school. Um, I was lucky enough that I was in San Francisco and you know, people are super open minded. Um, teachers at my school, they really couldn't care less. So I would like show up with like crazy hair and my white face and like red eyeshadow and like platform buffalo shoes and so i guess like that's when my social media grew my instagram account kind of grew to what back then was considered i uh, guess a lot of followers but nowadays it's just ridiculous but i think i had like 8,000 followers when i left san francisco so yeah a lot of people were following me on social media for my looks and then in 2013 i was finished with school and i graduated from san francisco state university and i actually moved back to paris i'm gonna do my nose contour not off camera but i'm not going to talk talk because I cannot for the life of me do my nose contour and talk at the same time so I'm gonna film it I'm gonna fast forward it and then I'll come back for highlight all right and we're back so for highlight I'm gonna use the Maron cream blend stick and 400 W which is white so when I moved back to Paris I kept you know pulling looks and having fun and being creative I guess like I attracted attention to some people who wanted to work with me so I started doing like photo shoots and I would like actually invest money into new looks to photograph them and work with a bunch of people um so yeah I was just like living my best life I remember back then I was dating someone and I came home from a photo shoot one day and he was watching RuPaul's Drag Race so of course I had heard of RuPaul's Drag Race who hadn't back then was season four so i had heard of rupaul's drag race but it's kind of, it's one of those things you know when like people talk to you about something so much it makes you want to not watch it i don't know if it's just me but it's the same thing with a lot of like classic movies that the more people talk to me about them the less i'm likely to watch them i don't know why it's like sometimes i feel like things are so overhyped that i'm usually disappointed um so it was kind of that with rupaul's drag race like a lot of people in san francisco i remember um they were playing it in the cafeteria one time and everybody like every gay was like oh my god i love that show and i don't know i never really got into it i never really saw an interest until i came home from that photo shoot and so he was watching season four and i remember walking in and being like "Ugh, this again really but he was watching so i sat down with him and i decided to watch that 
episode. So we watched the entire episode. And when we were done, he was like, do you want to watch something else? And I was like, actually, no, I kind of liked it. Let's play another one. And we ended up actually finishing the entire season. Now, I was just like really surprised because the only drag I had been in contact with was like the drag that I saw in San Francisco in, in bars. It was just like really classic, glamorous drag. It wasn't like anything fashion forward or even like out of the box. And I remember watching season four and Sharon Needles was on and I was like, wow. So I guess like drag can be anything. You can be like a goth drag queen. You can be witchy. You can be glamorous. You can be quirky. Um, and it really opened my eyes to the diversity that drag can offer. So eventually this guy and I broke up and it was really hard on me. So I really wanted to move away from Paris because Paris held a lot of memories from him. So I figured out a way to move to New York. I was hoping I would just, you know, meet a rich American and I would get married and then I could get to stay. So that was my plan. So now I'm going to powder using the KVD Vegan Beauty Locket uh, Setting Powder in Translucent. Originally, I was living in Brooklyn and I was like hanging out a lot in queer and gay bars. And so that's that's when I started frequenting a lot of people and a lot of drag queens that um, a lot of them actually ended up being on RuPaul's Drag Race eventually. Like Aja, Bob the Drag Queen, Thorgy Thor, even Pearl, because back then she was still living in New York before moving to Chicago. I was around a lot of like not only drag performers, but a lot of like artists. A lot of trans women also who weren't necessarily doing drag but who were performance artists. So I was just really surrounded by a lot of artists altogether. So as I was in Brooklyn, I was going to a lot of parties. Um, some of them who, that still exist and some others that are dead. Uh, but I remember I would go to a party called Top 8, which was really popular. Um, I was going to a party called Bath Salts in Don Pedro, which is the place where I met so many drag performers. I would go every Monday. It was just so much fun. And I really learned, you know, a lot about the art of drag, of performance art, just art in general. And it was just so many people being just queer, you know, being very effeminate, being trans, being non-binary, being creative, being out of the box, colorful. And it was just really amazing to be a part of that scene. Now, um, besides, you know, going to parties and going to school, I also started working at parties as a host. So um, I would host like events such as like Up and Down for Kenny Kenny, Susan Barches on top at Le Bang. My good friend Reefy Royalty started his own party in Brooklyn called Straight Acting, which actually still exists to this day. So I was just like living my best life. And so back then, that is when um, I started to kind of create a character for myself. So I kind of took the white face that I was already doing in San Francisco and in Paris, um, but I learned how to use actual white foundation with the powder. And I was doing this little like kind of like it makeup. I would have like the white face and then I would draw like a line across my eye. I was, I was usually wearing like horns. And so I kind of created this character for myself, which I later on, I guess in New York, I decided to call Ghost. Now I went with Ghost because I wanted a name that first of all represented my aesthetic, white face, ghost, but also that was genderless because um, a ghost can be female or male or non-binary or whatever. Um, and so I thought it was really fitting. All right, so now that we're done with the base, what I like to do is I like to apply some setting spray so that my foundation and the powder really blends into the skin. So today I'm gonna go ahead with NYX Dewy Finish Fini Velouté. I just got this, so I've never really used this, so we'll see how that goes. All right, let's go. So then in 2015 is when I moved back to Paris. Unfortunately, I did not find a rich American husband, so I had no choice then to just move back to France. I continued to, you know, again, have fun with my looks and go out dressed as ghost. Now, I wouldn't really work as a host because there isn't such a thing as hosts in France, really. Um, so I was just I would just go out as a ghost for fun and I remember uh, 
what's interesting is actually the queer scene had evolved so much in so little time. I remember I went out as a ghost and people were like, why are you dressing up? Like, this isn't Halloween. So the scene had changed a lot, but I couldn't care less. And so I, uh, one of my really good friends that I had known for a long time, she had been doing drag for about six months. And one night she, she didn't really want to go out and drag herself. Like she couldn't be bothered, but she was down to play with makeup. So she, she offered like, Hey, do you want me to do your makeup? I think it could be fun. And I was like, yeah, I mean, I guess I'm down, you know, like again, I had never really expressed any interest in doing drag drag but I was like if you're gonna do my makeup honestly I'm down I'll take it so she put me in drag for my first time and you know she had only been doing drag for like six months so she wasn't like super she wasn't a professional and mind you I was looking a hot mess but bitch I was like feeling myself um, if I can find a picture, I'll try and insert it right here if I can. Uh, but I was like feeling myself. We didn't even have a wig because, you know, she... First of all, I don't even know like how or why she had makeup on her. But she did not have a wig. So we just like found like a, a scarf or something that we tied around my head. And my best friend, she had a spare shirt that night a Susie and the Banshees shirt. So I wore that and anyway, I can't even remember like why I wore what I wore, but I just knew I was feeling myself. I thought it was sickening. I thought it was the shit. And so we actually went out that night and I really enjoyed being in drag, but I also enjoyed the way people um, treated me and the way people were interacting with me. Like everybody was super friendly. Everybody was like super warm. I just remember having a really good time and you know, I was like, wow, like this is something that I definitely could see myself doing because it's a little bit more, I guess like my ghost character was just really freaky, would actually weird people out and um, me and drag, which did not have a name back then, uh, people were just like really comfortable with me. So I had a lot of fun and I was like, oh, this is something I definitely could see myself do in the future. So that's when I decided to um, splurge a little bit and buy myself my first um, brush kit and my first eyeshadow palette. There weren't like a lot of indie brands and affordable brands, like everything you could find was at Sephora. It was very limited, it was really pricey. So I remember I bought like brushes off of Amazon I think and then a palette from AliExpress it was like a 52 shade palette for like $20 of course they weren't pigmented they were basically transparent but anyway the funny thing is I have been to art school but I I don't know I don't even know why I've never been really a creative person I've never really been an artsy person I was terrible at drawing and painting and I had never picked up a makeup brush in my entire life so it was a really interesting and slow process um getting started but back then there wasn't as much competition as there is now uh, very few people were doing drag in Paris. RuPaul's Drag Race was popular, but it wasn't what it is today. Now it's like really this juggernaut of like reality television. I guess like getting started with drag back then wasn't as hard as it might be now. Okay, so now I'm gonna apply glitter and uh, for primer, I'm gonna use the NYX Glitter Primer. For glitter, as always, I'm gonna use Paris Berlin La Paillette Cristal. So it's a crystal glitter. I, If you've watched my videos here, if it's my basic go-to drug makeup, I always use this. Um, so you've probably seen it a lot and I'm gonna apply this all over my lid. All right, so we're gonna move on to contour and blush and then we're gonna try and make it fast because I feel like this video's already been going on for so long. So for contour, I'm gonna use, as always, the Anastasia Beverly Hills Contour Kit, light to medium. As you can see, this has been used quite a lot. I've had this literally since I've been doing drag. So this is one of the first things that I bought. 
So back in the day, I was I was just doing drag for fun, and you know people were really responding to my drag. It was very much inspired by you know my my own aesthetic as a boy, very dark, very cyberpunk, very edgy, inspired by you know BDSM and fetish. I was really into like vinyl and black, and um, and so yeah, people were really responding to it on social media, and so eventually I decided to um, not only come up with an actual drag name but also like create my my own little drag instagram account so i i actually used the same account but i switched to a different name and i actually added electra to ghost because i wanted it to be a little more feminine as you know if you've seen my video because it's inspired by um the comics and i switched my name from lenny cartwright to ghost electra and that's how she was born and so i started posting a lot of content and i kind of blew up for a time like i remember a buzzfeed article came out with like 28 european drag queens to follow and i was one of them among friends and people that i admire such as like hungry um and chloe waldorf from from berlin here again i didn't think i was going to make a career out of it but i was like this is something i really enjoy and people seem to enjoy it so who knows where this can go after like a year and a half of doing drag um i started performing at venues but i was kind of having a hard time finding my my spot in the queer scene and one day my boyfriend and i were um on a saturday we like we really wanted to go have fun with some of our friends at a goth party but then there was like a drag event going on and i really wanted to make it as well and i remember thinking like wouldn't it be amazing if there was like if we didn't have to pick between those two on a saturday and if there was like a dark goth event that had like drag shows and that's when we decided to produce our own party and we came up with tech noir now tech noir it's my very first event it's been going on well not because of the pandemic it hasn't been going on for a while but it's four years old i had never produced a party in my entire life i had no idea what goes into producing an event but i was like i'm gonna learn on the spot all right so we're gonna move on to blood now for blush, as always, I'm gonna use the KBD Vegan Beauty Everlasting Blush in Peony. For lips, we're gonna do my go-to combo. Um, now, I used to use um, a brand that we no longer support on this channel, but I did find a shade that resembles it, and so we're gonna use um, Sugar Pill Liquid Lipstick in Anti-Socialite. All right, she's coming to life. Okay, so we're gonna move on to mascara. Now for mascara, I'm gonna use the Marc Jacobs Velvet Noir Major Volume Mascara. And after my, you know, account kind of blew up back then, um, and people started paying attention to French drag performers, um, I was booked internationally, I was able to, you know, travel the world to perform, and I really took it seriously, I invested a lot of time, energy, and money into drag, and eventually I quit my job as a translator, and I started doing drag for a living, and it's now been, I think, three years that I've been doing drag for a living. For highlighter, I'm gonna use the Fenty Beauty Kilowatt Highlighter in Waterbrat. All right, so she's highlighted for the god. She's coming together. So yeah, like I said, I have been doing drag professionally for four years and I've been loving it. It's been a struggle at times, especially with the new RuPaul's Drag Race craze. Um, it's really hard to keep up because now there's so many like creative people There's like new kids on the block and they're amazing makeup artists So it's really hard to keep up But I I have found my calling not only with drag But also with event production because then eventually I created my own event production company. I've been producing uh, festivals and parties and concerts and um, the first ever uh, drag market of France so I've been working on a lot of events and I've really enjoyed um, you know, producing events, queer events, alternative events, and doing drag and performing across the world. As always, for false lashes, I'm going to use the Sugar Pale Plush False Eyelashes. 
All right, so now this look is almost complete. We're gonna top the lips off with a gloss. Now for gloss, I'm gonna use the NYX Lingerie Gloss. All right, everybody, this is the final makeup look, finally complete. I'm super happy about it. Now, of course, like I said, my foundation is looking very yellow. Um, you know, maybe I should have gone for a different shade. This is definitely too yellow for my skin tone, but who cares? It's drag, you guys. No one cares. I'm gonna go ahead and put on my wig and my outfit for the final reveal, and then I will give you my very last thoughts about makeup and drag. So I'll see you in three, two, one. And voila! What do you guys think? This is the complete look. I'm super happy with it. Half and half. You've got Ghost Electra on one side and Lenny on the other. Super happy with it. It's kind of fascinating how makeup again really change your face like this is just makeup it's kind of incredible so what is the conclusion to all of this because you know i've been talking at length i know this video has been so long but i've been talking at length about you know how i got into makeup and into drag um and my experience with it but you know all in all, I think makeup is a way for someone to have fun and to embrace yourself. You know, sometimes when it's not a good day and you feel kind of shitty, you just slap on some makeup and you feel much better. It kind of gives you the confidence to, to go about your day, you know? It's helped me accept my femininity. As a gay man, society really expects of you that you adopt standards of masculinity to kind of compensate for your queerness, you know? And I, I really felt pressured for years to just be as masculine as possible. And you know, when I was on Grindr, I would receive messages from guys that were really awful because I was a little femme and you could, t I was really preppy, I was really dressy and they could tell I wasn't like the the masculine person that they wanted me to be but you know it's okay and makeup has really helped me embrace my femininity have fun with it sometimes i feel very femme and i go out as ghost electra sometimes i feel really butch and i go out as lenny and sometimes i have fun with both and i just do a little smoky eye and who cares makeup is genderless it belongs to everyone regardless of your gender your ethnicity your sexual orientation the way you present yourself and you know when you look at the history of makeup makeup has been used throughout times by tribes as war paints or in theater during the renaissance and it's never necessarily been a side to a gender and nowadays it has been and i think we're kind of getting out of that with drag and uh, a lot of boys in makeup and i think that's great doing drag and doing makeup has kind of pushed me to the queer scene a lot of gay men are very um, heteronormative and the scene can be very um, heteronormative as well but being a drag performer and being queer and being femme it's really helped me meet a lot of different people uh, whether they are trans whether they're non-binary whether they're hella femme and it's really taught me a lot about gender and sexual orientation and just human beings in general and i'm so appreciative for that i'm so appreciative for all the people that i met along the way um and and accurately with drag that i get to meet every day makeup is really powerful it's been here in a way forever and and it will forever be here i think as long as we're on this planet and i just think it's time that everyone embraces makeup and has fun with it because that's what it's made for so here we are years later after the little boy that i was had never even picked up a brush or played with makeup throughout those decades i have you know come to embrace the power of makeup and here I am and I do that for a living and I love it and and here you are watching me and I appreciate that so much so yeah there you go super happy I hope you like it I hope you like this video if you did enjoy this video please make sure to give me a thumbs up and if you want to see more videos like this make sure to subscribe I'm going to try to post every week if I can I have a few videos coming up my boyfriend did my makeup and I'm telling you right now it did not look like this if you don't already and you want to follow me on Instagram where I post a lot more makeup looks you can do so right here at Ghost Electra and yeah that's it thank you so much for watching I hope you did enjoy it and I guess I'll see you guys in the next one bye